In this video, we will review the critical settings and the main product adjustments for the FBD 560 series of units. We will cover the tools required, review critical settings, including where and how they are displayed and adjusted, and then we'll review how to set the bricks for the final product. The tools and materials required to complete this task are shown and listed here. The following settings are crucial to the stable operation and the quality of the final product produced by the FBD machine. Firstly, the line voltage is really a calibration of what the FBD measures internally with comparison to the site power supply. There can only be a maximum of a 2 volt variation between the two. Unregulated CO2 is what we would refer to as the supply CO2, whether it be from bottles or a bulk container. A CO2 supply must be between 482 and 496 kPa, or 70 to 72 psi. Use the supply regulator gauges as a guide. The 70 to 72 psi must be displayed on the FBD's screen. Regulated CO2 is an internal pressure adjustment made at the FBD. We need to set the pressure at 413 kPa, or 60 psi. Again. The gauge on the regulator is for a guide only. It needs to be set against what the machine is seeing, and that is displayed on the LCD viewable at the keypad. Our syrup pressure, or the supply we put onto our syrup pumps, needs to be set at 482 to 496 kPa, or 70 to 72 psi. This is typically equal to our unregulated CO2 pressure. Our water supply, which needs to be filtered, will have a static pressure of 482 kPa or 70 psi, with a flowing pressure dropping to 207 kPa or 30 psi minimum. From that, the internal water pressure, or H2O pressure, as it's displayed on the FBD, will sit somewhere in the order of 85 to 92 psi. One of the last critical settings to check on is the expansion tank regulator. This is a pressure relief style regulator, which is factory set at 207 kPa or 30 psi. Although this will rarely need adjusting, like all regulators it can creep. With the above six critical settings adjusted and the machine stabilised, we can then move on to the important product adjustment, or what goes into the barrel. We need to adjust both the water flow and syrup flow at the solution module. Our water flow needs to be set at 15 ounces in 10 seconds, or 444 mils in 10 seconds. Our syrup flow needs to be adjusted so that we achieve a 13% bricks, plus or minus 0.5, and this is for the sugar-based syrups. From understanding our critical settings, we'll now review how to find these critical settings in the FBD menu. As we scroll through to the service menu, the first item that we need to check is the time. The time is a simple 24 hour clock with hours, minutes and seconds. The seconds are handy when checking our flow rate at a later stage. We scroll forward once more and we get to the date, which is in a simple year, month and day format. Date and time being set correctly will help us keep track of our fault history and also all the sleep, wake and defrost times are set based upon this information. We scroll forward to Daylight Saving, which when it is on, adds one hour to the system time. We scroll forward again through to the defrost times, forward again through to the wake sleep times, fault code history, and then to the service menu where we select the grey button. We scroll now through to readouts. Select, we want to go to common readouts. We've got a water pressure of 83 psi. We have unregulated pressure of 70, which is the supply CO2. We have a regulated pressure of 60 psi. A line supply, 241. So now we need to go back to readouts and we'll go and check syrup pressure under side one readouts. We scroll past beta percentage past tank pressure to syrup pressure which here is 70. 
we have checked the syrup pressure under side one, but this can also be checked under side two and side three on a 563 machine. To calibrate the FBD displayed voltage to match the actual supply voltage, we need to gain access to the electrical box. Please take care and follow safe electrical work practices. This is the FBD electrical box where the compressor contactor and lower power board are fitted. The right hand side of the contactor is the live side. Measure with a multimeter line 1 and line 2. Line 1 is the active and line 2 is the neutral. Compare the measured voltage with what is being displayed on the FBD screen. Then with a small screwdriver adjust the blue pot on the lower power board. This pot will calibrate or adjust the voltage displayed by the FBD. Clockwise will make the voltage higher and anti-clockwise will make the voltage lower. So bringing it together, we measure the supply voltage at the contactor with our multimeter. We compare this to the line voltage displayed on the FBD screen. And using the pot on the lower power board, we adjust the FBD screen displayed voltage until it matches our measured supply voltage at the contactor. The adjustments to the pot should be carried out slowly with a small quarter turn. Any change will take a few moments to update on the display. After a few minutes of adjusting, the end result should be the measured supply voltage matching the FBD display voltage. Our unregulated CO2 pressure is adjusted at its point of supply, which is often nearby the bulk tank or bottles. The regulated gauge can only be used as a guide. The pressure must be set against the FBD unit's display. Our unregulated CO2 pressure needs to be set in the range of 482 to 496 kPa or 70 to 72 psi. The regulated CO2 pressure is adjusted at the FBD. The regulator is mounted on the header assembly and you can only access this by removing the stainless steel panel below the keypad. The regulator on the header assembly is identifiable by the gauge mounted above it and the adjustment knob mounted on the front of it. To adjust the pressure, you first need to pull the knob or the lock ring, depending on the version, and then you need to turn the knob clockwise for more pressure and anti-clockwise for less pressure. When you're finished with the adjustments, you press the knob or lock ring back in. Note that if you're trying to reduce the pressure, adjustments made to the regulator will not take effect until you've released the previous pressure setting. To do this, you'll need to press the fill button on the front keypad, releasing the CO2 into the barrel. But if the barrel's already pressurised, first you'll need to release the pressure from the barrel by pulling on the face plate relief valve. Please use the gauge that's mounted above the regulator as a guide. The regulated CO2 pressure must be set against the LCD display at the keypad, and this needs to be set at 60 psi. Regulated CO2 pressure in the menu is found under the service menu, under readouts, and then under common readouts, and then scroll through to regulated CO2 pressure. Our filtered water supply needs to have a static pressure of 482 kPa or 70 psi, and have a minimum flowing pressure of 210 kPa or 30 psi. The FBD's water pressure reader, or H2O as it's displayed in the common readouts under the service menu, needs to be in the range of 85 to 92 psi. This is 15 to 20 psi more than the unregulated or supply CO2. If the water pressure reading is greater than 99 psi on the FBD machine, it will typically be because the unregulated CO2 supply pressure is more than 92 psi or the water pressure supply from a booster pump out of the RO or the filters is set too high. The expansion tank or active charge regulator is mounted within the FBD on the right hand side. You'll need to remove the right hand side panel to access this where you'll see it just below the barrels behind the electrical box. The regulator is factory set at 30 psi and will rarely require adjustment. All the same, we recommend that it is checked to ensure that the barrels are all well balanced. The expansion tank regulator has a standard tyre valve to test the pressure from. Using a gauge, confirm that the pressure is set at 207 kPa or 30 psi. 
Product adjustments for the FBD are all completed on the header assembly. There is a syrup module corresponding to each barrel. Each syrup module has a brick sink sample outlet and tube, a brick sample valve, a water flow and syrup flow adjustment screw. The brick sample valve is operated by a simple 90 degree turn, going from the horizontal or closed position to the vertical open position. The water flow adjustment must be completed before the syrup adjustment. To set the water flow rate, the syrup must be isolated or backed off at the adjacent syrup valve. You need to achieve a consistent 15 ounces or 444 mils in a 10 second sample. With the water flow set, syrup flow rates can now be adjusted and the sample needs to be checked with a refractometer, aiming for a 13% Brix rate. Both water and syrup valves adjust in the same way, clockwise or in for more syrup and anti-clockwise or out for less flow. The solution comes out down this hose and out the bottom just here for the middle one and for the far right hand side barrel three it's out the bottom as well. So with our critical settings correct we now need to adjust our water flow. So we go through and there's a timer. We wind out our syrup out is less flow. Remove a small sample after backing off our syrup. So using the FBD time clock, we will now sample the water. We require 444 mil or 15 ounces in 10 seconds. Turning the brick sample valve on should be a decisive action. The valve needs to be fully open, otherwise you will get an inconsistent flow rate or weak syrup samples. On one side of this measuring cylinder it shows 15 ounces, on the other side it shows 444 mil. With one test done, we should check it again to make sure that we have the correct flow rate. Again, we'll look for another sample with 15 ounces or 444 mil in 10 seconds. With our second water flow rate sample collected, and it being a consistent 444 mils in 10 seconds, we can now move on to bricksing our product. So we'll start by turning it two and a half turns clockwise in to give us more syrup. One, two, half. To achieve consistent brick samples, we need to collect at least 250 to 300 mil of product and then use our calibrated refractometer to check this sample. It's 15, so we need to wind it back. Back it off. Half a turn. So with our second sample taken, we're now check with our refractometer. In this case, we're at 14%, so we still need to decrease the flow rate, turning it anti-clockwise, probably another half a turn. Take a third sample of at least 250 mil, and then check with our refractometer again. Spot on 13. So in summary, we need to make sure that the FBD has first been set up correctly before adjusting the product. We need to check that the line voltage, the CO2 pressures, the syrup pressure, the water pressures and the expansion tank regulator have been checked first and are stable. Then we can adjust the product at the solution module, starting with setting the correct water flow rate and then adjusting the syrup flow to achieve the desired BRICS ratio for the syrup we're using.